If you want to figure out your purpose, you need to figure out what you stand for as a human. I brought a whole book on it. It's here. It's called Your One Word. It's about finding your most important core value. Who are you? When you understand what your single most important core value is, everything else becomes so much easier. So for me, it's belief. My belief is my single most important core value. How does that help? Well, with every decision that I make, it's seen through the lens of belief. Every video content that I make is about belief. It has to be. Every interaction I have, every workshop, every book, every meeting, all of it has to be run through the belief. If I'm hiring somebody onto my team, skills alone aren't enough. It's great that you can write copies. Do you believe in entrepreneurs? So when you understand your core value, everything else becomes clearer and you're less likely to follow what other people want you to do. Everybody around you, they have a goal for you, even if it's well-intentioned. They have opinions on what you should do with your life. Everybody around you. This is what you should do with your life. Everybody has an opinion. You don't know which way to go. If you don't know which way to go, it's because you don't know what you stand for because you're standing on quicksand. But when you understand your one word, your who, your most important core value, it's like you're standing on a rock that nobody can push you from. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. Hey, this is Nina Huang Carmichael. And chances are you are the most ambitious person in your circle. But you know you're capable of more. And you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, my husband Evan Carmichael. And his top 10 rules for success. I hope you enjoy, because I'm going to enjoy. So how do you figure that out quickly, right? I mean, this is 200 something pages. Let's boil it down super quick for you. You want to think about all the people that you love, your favorite teacher, what you loved about your parents. Think about your favorite musician, your favorite band, your favorite song, your favorite movie, your favorite book, all, the, all your favorite things. The things that when you are around consuming it, reading it, being with them, it makes you feel bold, alive, amazing, confident, unstoppable, right? We've all had those moments. It's just not consistent enough yet. We're going to make it for you. It's just not consistent enough yet. And so write down a list of five to 10 things that make you come alive. Again, people, your favorite teacher, movies, all of those things that make you, that you love, that you love, like you could get lost spending time with them or reading them or listening to them. Then write down three keywords that describe each of them. So your favorite teacher, why did you love Mr. Jones? It's not because he taught you grade four math, right? There was something else about Mr. Jones that you love. Why do I love Seabiscuit, the movie? Because it's about an oversized jockey and an undersized horse and an owner that has no money and all of these things. And they all come together. It's believe, right? My parents taught me that I'm Evan Castrilli Carmichael and I can do anything that I believe that I can. Right? And so through all the things that I love, believe is the common thread. What is it for you? You have to figure it out. You have to figure it out. It doesn't have to take you years of work. Just write down all of the people and the things that you love, three keywords for each, like do this. This is important. Just do it today. It'll make a huge difference in your life. It's worth it. This is the best 15 minutes you can spend in your life. Do it. <laughs> Pause the video and do it. And then just see what comes up consistently. What word comes up over and over and over and over and over and over again? Chances are that's your one word, that's your who. Then when you discover it, you have to start living that life. So, you know, if my one word is believe, then I gotta think, okay, who around me is not believe? What am I doing that is not believe? What projects am I working on that are not believe? And it gives you clarity and forces some tough decisions. And the more unhappy you are right now in your life or business is because you are out of alignment with your one word. If I was doing something that was anti-belief, if I even have made tons of money, I'm not gonna be happy because it's against who I am. It's against my core value. Same thing for you. If you are unhappy, it's because you're doing things that don't align well with your core value and you don't know what your core value is, so fix it. Rule number two, act on your ideas. Most people never manifest their ideas because you don't trust your ideas. That bold idea that came to you, that made sense to you in the moment, the next day feels too bold too crazy, too insane, too not for someone like you. I believe that the decisions that come to you when you're feeling bold are actually the right ones for you and you have to take immediate action on because otherwise your head gets in the way and talks you down from doing the things that you should be doing. So right now I'm in the process of looking for a creative director for my business. Someone to look at all my content, suggest ways to make it better, to, to be focused on the branding and opportunities for me. And this was a suggestion from Mark Drager, friend of the channel, longtime personal friend of mine as well. He helped film my very first video. He's the reason why I did top 10 moves to success. Long story with Mark. And he said, Evan, you need a creative director for your business, creative director or a brand manager or CEO, somebody to be in charge of all the creative decisions and getting me out on the stages that I need to be out on. 
So how do we make these videos better? That's that person's role. And so in my head, when he first said it, I'm, I'm a little afraid, I'm scared. Like, oh, how do I find this person? I need to vibe well with them. I don't, I can't just bring anybody into that role. I'm a, I'm a pretty weird duck and so, this has to be a good, you know, long-term fit for me. How much is this person gonna cost? How do I fit into my cost structure right now with my business? How are we gonna deal with conflict? So it's all of the negativity, all of the things that are reasons why it's not gonna work. And so instead of to focus on, this is a bold idea and I need to at least explore it. I need to try it, I need to play it out. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But teaching yourself, teaching myself that I do bold things, I do scary things, I do difficult things, and being scared is not a good enough reason for not to take action. And so those ideas that come to you, trust that they came to you for a reason. If it came to you and you're thinking about it and you feel bold, like, man, I would love to go off and do that. The best thing you can do is just start going off and doing that. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna plan, 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 plan. You're gonna spend all your best energies just stuck in planning mode. Instead of actually going out and taking action, you're gonna tell your friends about it, they're gonna tell you it's a stupid idea, you're gonna sleep on it, you're gonna wake up and tell yourself it's a stupid idea, and then what happens is no momentum. The biggest thing that is missing from your life <laughs> is momentum. Nina's happy, Nina's smiling, she's next to me filming. That's all that's missing, you're a genius, you have great ideas, great, uh, genius, amazing ideas, you're just missing momentum. Because once you get the idea, you sit on it, and then you tell yourself why you can't do it, instead of going off and proving to yourself that you can. Rule number three, put in the effort. Self-love comes from doing difficult things. Self-love comes from doing things that you think are beyond your comfort zone, that you're not capable of doing, and just getting up and trying to do it. That's when you love yourself. When something is easy and you win, you actually don't feel that great about yourself. If you were to go and w uh, run a race against three-year-olds and you won, great, yeah, you won. You might even post about it on Instagram, but you don't love yourself. You don't feel good about yourself because you played small, because it was easy, because you were expected to win, because it was inside your comfort zone. When you play inside your comfort zone always, you don't love yourself. It comes from doing difficult things. That's how you build respect. That's how you build credibility. That's how you build self-love for you. Forget about how other people respect or look at you. It's how you feel about yourself. That's the game. And that comes from doing difficult things. So if you ran a race against three-year-olds and you won, great. Who cares? You don't feel great about yourself because you were expected to win. But if you ran a race against Usain Bolt and he ran backwards on one leg, he would still probably destroy you but you should feel great about yourself because you did the thing when it was hard to do the thing. You might have lost to the same boat, but you got in the race against him. That's how you build self-love. When you tie your self-respect, when you tie your self-worth, when you tie your self-love to the effort that you put in on a daily basis, that's when you start to win. When you tie your self-love to winning, to getting results, you lose. When you tie your self-love to how many likes you have on Instagram or views or subscribers on YouTube, you lose. It's about the effort. Are you putting in the effort every day? Because if you are proud of your effort on a daily basis, I promise you, you are going to crush it. But if you are only proud of yourself when you win, here's what's gonna happen. You're only gonna take on small things. You're gonna play small your entire life because you're only gonna take on projects that you have a pretty high chance of winning at because that's how you have love for yourself. And that's a losing game, because you're capable of more. You're capable of doing a lot more stuff. You're capable of playing a bigger game. You're capable of having a bigger impact. You have to. It's your duty. It's your duty to love yourself. When you love yourself, you'll be able to spread that more and help other people. And so how do you love yourself? It comes from doing difficult things. It comes from when your heart's beating like crazy and you're scared and it's some big project and you say, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna to try to do that scary thing. I'm gonna to try to record a video in public where people may be watching you. Doesn't mean your video has to be great. Chances are it's gonna suck. But you tried. And you should feel great about yourself. Rule number four, take control of your life. Saying I never have the time is the single greatest excuse that is preventing you from accomplishing your goals. You are not allowed to say it anymore. Stop it. Stop believing your own lies. Whatever story you're telling yourself as to why you can't do it, how much time you don't have, somebody else who made it had it way worse than you did. They made it and had it way worse than you did. If they can make it, you can too. The only difference is the story you're telling yourself that you don't have enough time to do it. So I'm gonna give you a more fun example on this one. Uh, I wanna get to being a better League of Legends player. 
okay? I would play League of Legends, I don't know, once or twice a week, depending on what was happening in my calendar. I started sponsoring a League of Legends player, my first esports venture, this guy named Kyle Menko, and he plays Teemo. Teemo's a character in the game. I play Teemo. He's the best Teemo in the world. In any region around the world, he is the number one guy. And I said, Kyle, Menko, I want to sponsor you, and part of the deal is you're going to coach me. I want you to coach me on how to get better. I want to get better. I want to climb. I was in bronze, which is the second worst division in League of Legends. I uh, said, what was the best you've ever done? He said, silver, which is the third worst division in League of Legends. And so he said, okay, I can help you. How often are you practicing? I said, I don't know, once or twice a week. It's like, okay, that's not enough. <laughs> I need you to play three games a day. Three games a day. And a game takes... 35 to 40 minutes, sometimes longer, depending on how long it takes to get into the game. Could be 45 minutes, maybe even up to an hour. And I'm thinking in my head, three games a day, are you nuts? I don't have time to do this. Uh, I can't make that happen. I got all these other responsibilities. Right? If it's important, you gotta stop telling yourself that you can't do it. How do I justify playing three games a day when I have all these other stuff I need to do, I need to run a business, I wanna scale, I wanna grow my YouTube channel, I wanna grow my impact, I need to write my book, I need to launch my YouTube course, I need to spend time with my wife and my family. I got lots of other things that I need to do. I need to sleep, you know, all of it. How do I justify spending three games a day to improve my team? I don't have the time. Your actions map to your ambitions. I look at my calendar and I made a way. I'm gonna do it. I want to get better. I want to improve. Now, I don't do it when I'm traveling, so I'm here in LA right now, so I haven't played my three games since I've been away. But when I'm in Toronto, pretty much every day that I'm in Toronto, I'll get my three games in. And I've gotten better. The results speak. I went from bronze to silver, and now I'm climbing up through silver, and I'm hopefully, the goal is to get the gold by the end of the year. So now it's the fourth worth, fourth worst division. And you're starting to get, once you get in the gold and you get a little bit higher, now you're starting to get some kind of, not reputation, but significance and just like you're actually a, a semi-decent player, right? So I'm, I'm chasing down my League of Legends goals. Because your personal goals, you may be watching and thinking, well, what is, like, why are you wasting your time doing it? It's a personal goal to me. It might be a waste of time to you. Maybe building a, a deck for your backyard is a big waste of time for me. Maybe making your own clothes or whatever other hobby you have, cooking or crafting, is a big waste of time for me, right? So don't judge somebody else's personal goals. This is a personal goal of mine. I wanna chase it down. And I wanna not tell myself that I don't have the time. Right? As soon as you hear yourself say, I don't have the time, you're not taking control of your calendar. You're not taking control of your life. Of course you have the time. You choose not to prioritize it. That's the, that's the change in language you need to make. You're not allowed to say, I don't have the time. Instead, I choose not to prioritize it. Because now you're in charge. Now you have nobody to blame. Because when it's somebody else's fault, when you don't have the time, that's not your fault. It's somebody else's fault. That's everybody else who, who has demands on your time, right? You can't do anything about it. So let's just stay here and never accomplish your goals. You choose not to prioritize it. Once you take accountability, once you take responsibility to say, I'm going to take control of what I want to do in my life, that's when everything starts to change. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free there's a link in the description below go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business i'll see you there you look at the people who've made big money they've been they've been chasing something that they love doing because otherwise you won't put in enough work if you're just chasing an opportunity you're, you're probably not going to make it if you don't love it enough the people who love it will crush you like if salsa dancing was the hot trend for 2020, you can say, great, I'm gonna make tons of money salsa dancing being, a, being an instructor, and then I'll do that for three years and then retire and go travel the world and do what I love. You'll never make the money salsa dancing because Alex is gonna destroy you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, because he loves it, right? Because you'll, you'll be a, a wannabe and you'll never put in enough work to actually get great at the thing. Like if you're, if you're going to work with somebody who's going to be in your, in your production, 
and they're just, they just want to make it as an actor because they think it's a path to make tons of money. Because Brad Pitt makes $40 million a movie or whatever it is. But they don't actually care about being a good actor. They're not even going to get into your show. Like you're going to spot that out and say, no, I need people who actually care about the craft. Rule number six, learn how to sell. You don't have to be an extrovert to sell. You also don't have to be a slime ball to sell either. All you need to sell is a vision that you believe in and a passion to make it come true. And if you don't learn to effectively sell, that genius idea that you have in here that can serve the world will never come to fruition and you'll never get the impact that you're after. So I'm here in LA and over the past two days, I've been on the podcast for Jordan Belfort, Wolf of Wall Street and Jay Abraham, who's the legendary marketing guru for Tony Robbins and Damon John and a whole bunch of other people. And I'm on their podcast and I'm telling them that they need to be on YouTube, that they need to get their message out. I wanna see them more heavily invested. I wanna see their message reach the world. And five years ago, Evan of five years ago would have been too afraid, too humbled, to worry that I might not be perfect, that I wouldn't be able to persuade them to do the thing, and so I wouldn't have tried. And I still have a bit of that in me. When, when Jordan Belfort asked me, how good are you? Like, how good at YouTube are you? And the answer that I gave was within the thought leadership world, if you, you wanna help entrepreneurs, I'm, I'm top three, five in the world. Even as I say it, it feels weird saying it because the, the Canadian or Carmichael kind of humbleness is pumping in, but it's also true. Because when you're talking to somebody who is not super familiar with what you're doing, they're trying to get an understanding. When I'm talking to Jordan Belfort and trying to give him an understanding of what I do and why my message is so important for him, I'm trying to serve him, I'm trying to help him. I want him to win. So the credibility is important, it backs it up. And me not strongly believing in myself means that he won't believe in me either. And one of my favorite messages from Jordan, and I told him this at the beginning of the podcast interview was, sales is about a transfer of certainty. Of all the things I've learned from Jordan Belfort, that is the number one thing that still rings true in my head. Sales, if you wanna sell people, you wanna persuade them on something. And it's, again, not for nefarious reasons, not to screw somebody over, not just to get their money. You wanna persuade them. I'm here trying to persuade Jordan, trying to persuade Jay, trying to persuade lots of other people to take their message and put it up on YouTube to spread it to the world. It's for them, right? I got frustrated with Jordan halfway through the interview and he said, why are you frustrated? Because he's making it a joke and some and having fun and, and he loves having fun on the show and, and it, it's a more entertaining show. He's way more funny and entertaining than I am. I told him, you're doing this for the audience because people will watch the show. I'm doing this for you. Like we're here at a limited time and I want you to win. I want to get this out of my head into yours so you can go take action on it, right? So the ability to sell and persuade is based off your ability to transfer certainty. And so when you fully believe in the thing, when you fully believe in the thing like this is right, this is the thing that has to happen in service, in service for your customer, in service for your audience, you have to do this, not for me, but because it's the best thing for you. When you fully believe it, then you have to go all in on it. Rule number seven, don't settle for average. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something, but instead of being world class at that thing, you settled for being just above average at something that you should not be doing. Albert Einstein once said, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will believe its whole life that it is stupid. That's most people's problems. You are a fish and you're trying to climb a tree instead of going and being great at swimming. This is the exact problem that I am on a mission to solve. So I recently had a young entrepreneur come to one of my Toronto Q&A meetups that are free that I host every week. And he said, Evan, I have a problem. I'm trying to decide between what my parents want me to be, which is an architect, and what I feel a yearning towards, which is being a musician. And I don't know what to do. I don't know how to decide. I don't know how I'm going to be a success as a musician. I don't know how it's going to work out. And my parents want me to be an architect, and this is clearly defined path for how to do it. And he's afraid. And I think that's so many people. There's this safe, perfect path that has been designed that people have done forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Or there's this new, crazy, messy, unrealistic, unsafe, unsure path, which is following your passion, being an entrepreneur, and trying to figure out where you're supposed to go. 
Here's the thing. If you only go down that safe path, if you only take that job, if you only listen to your parents or other people and, and you do what they want you to do, you're always going to be unhappy. You're always going to know that there was this thing inside you that you could have done that you didn't take action on and you hate it. It's never been easier to actually be yourself and build a business and have success being uniquely you, right? This was not open to your parents and definitely not your grandparents. The ability to be an entrepreneur on the side, making money using your phone is something that your grandparents don't understand. It's just, it's totally wild. And so you are a unique individual, right? You are, I am, we all are. You have unique interests, personality traits, belief systems. You're unique. You need to do something unique. If you are unique, you need to do something unique. If you're stuck doing the same thing that somebody else wants you to do, you're never going to be happy. Now, there may be some alignment. You may not absolutely hate the job that you're at, but you know you're capable of more. You're Michael Jordan. You are the Michael Jordan of something. You're a genius, an absolute bona fide genius at something. This is why I think it's the world's greatest problem. This is why I do what I do every single day in making this content and videos for you because I want to unlock people, hopefully more than one at a time, but even if it's just one person who watches this video and gets unlocked, I'm pumped because I think if everybody is off doing the thing that they are a genius at, man, I want to live in that world. Rule number eight, take more action. Hope without action leads to pain and suffering. Watching videos like this is not enough. It might give you hope but hope that is not tied to action and you doing something will mean you never accomplish your goals. The answer is always action. It's hope and then action. And when that doesn't work out, more action. And when that doesn't work out, more action. So a couple years ago, I was in New York and I was meeting with my agents and one of them said, what am I trying to do? What's, what's my vision? What's my mission? What am I trying to accomplish? And I said, I wanted to spread belief. I wanted to spread hope. And he jumped all over me about the hope. Like you want to spread hope? Hope's not enough. You can't just do hope. And, and I remember walking away, he's like, what's he talking about? Hope is so important. If you don't have hope, how are you going to believe in yourself to go chase something down? Without hope, you got nothing, right? Without hope and belief, you got nothing. Where I realized the difference in the thinking is the usage of the word is people hope things will happen. It's not having hope in something. It's hoping that it's going to happen. And then they sit on their bed, sit on their couch, sit at home and do nothing. That kind of hope, that's not a strategy. Hope and belief is your first step. It's your first entry point in. You have hope that things will happen. But then you gotta get up and do something, right? And so, figuring out that message when I was talking to my agent didn't come to you right away in the moment because at the same time, as much as I'm filled with hope and belief in humanity and, and what we can all do, I'm working, right? I'm taking action. I'm making three to four videos every day. We haven't had a day in the past five years where a video hasn't gone up every single day. I don't know what that consecutive streak is, but it's long, it's big. I'm working my face off every day in the achievement of my mission. But I also love hope and belief. It's why I have this channel, it's why I have my other channels, is I want, I want to be around people who've done a lot more. I want to learn from the greats. I want to learn from people who know more than me. And when I see that, it gives me hope that it's possible. It gives me belief that it's possible, that if they can do it, I can do it too. But you still have to do it. The ability to do it versus actually executing and doing it are two very different things, right? The difference gap is going to be the action. And so, yes, I want you to have hope. I think it's important, but it's not the only thing. You got to make sure you turn that hope and not just rely on the strategy, but you're doing the daily work to chase down your dreams. Rule number nine, try new things. People aren't lazy. They just don't have dreams that inspire them. They default to thinking, I'm a lazy person. I don't have ambitions. I don't know what I want to do in life. I'm just, I'm just a loser. No, you just don't have a dream that makes you want to go off and do something. And until you figure that out, you're going to be in this constant cycle of feeling like a loser. It's one of the most common questions that I get asked on my IG streams. I go live every single day on Instagram, at least right now while I'm on my tour. And every single day I get asked some variation of, Evan, I'm lazy. How do I get out of it? Evan, I'm procrastinating. How do I get out of it? One, you don't call yourself a lazy person. There's no such thing as a lazy person. If you are procrastinating or you're being lazy, right? you are being lazy doesn't mean that you are a lazy person. There's two reasons why you're doing it. There's two reasons why you are being lazy. One, you don't have a dream that's big enough. You don't have something that inspires you. You don't want to get out of bed in the morning. If I was an accountant, I would be a really lazy accountant. I would hate my life. 
not to knock accountants. It's just not for me. If I was a video editor, <laughs> I, would be, I would be lazy. I would hate my life. I don't want to be a video editor. I don't want to be an accountant. Actually, there's most things in the world that I don't want to be. And if you forced me to do that, I would be lazy. That's 95% of America. I think 95% of America wakes up and drives to a job that they hate. And then they're lazy there. But they have dreams. They have ambitions. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. You just have to find it. And so if you don't know what that thing is, then it's your duty to go off and explore. You test, you try, you see. You say yes to a lot of stuff. Like this is the most important thing that you need to figure out in your life if you don't know what your dream is. You have to go off and try things. Just like you won't get married until you go on dates. You won't get married to an idea until you go on dates, until you try it, until you say yes. And the acid test is, did I like it? Do I want to go back? Does this fill me up? Did I enjoy the process of it? Can I see myself doing this and having fun? Because when you're having fun doing the work, that's when it will fill you up. That's when you won't be lazy. And there has been times in all your lives where you felt that, where you felt the joy, the energy, the ambition, the drive. And so you need to capture that and say yes and find what it is that your big dream is. And rule number 10, the last one before our very special bonus clip for you is have fun. What is the most constructive criticism you've ever received? Can you go to the next question? I don't know. No, this is a good question. No, no, okay, go to the next question. Are you serious? Yeah, you skip yeah. this? That's a great yeah. question. No. Yeah, I had a great answer to Ignatian. Anyway. You can tell on. me afterward. How often do you take stock of your life and evaluate the direction you're going? When you do... Okay, next question. I don't like this one, too. Because <laughs> it's too long, right? Okay. As already, she's already zoning out. It was not, if you can't answer the question in 10 words, she's out. Okay. Where's someone you never want to travel to and why? That's a pretty question. Well, I didn't even hear what you said. Where is somewhere you'd never want to travel to and why? I would want to travel everywhere. It could be even like something small, like a sewer. <laughs> like, no. It doesn't have to be a country. Would you want to travel to a sewer? No. Okay, we'll take it something like that. Okay, not a sewer. Okay. No, not a sewer. It's something similar. I don't know. What else? How about a slaughterhouse? No. What? But no. where would there be a slaughterhouse? I don't know. General. Like, you could pick, you don't have to pick, like, China or something. You could, you could pick a. No, I'm saying you don't have to pick something. You pick, you don't have to be a city or a country. You could pick, you could pick I don't something know. else. Any, anywhere that it's, it's thrilled. A horror, I don't like to go. Oh, there you go. Like a horror horror amusement park or something. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. Good answer, good answer, good answer, <laughs> Nina. Good answer, good answer. I would say space. Why? Well, don't you want to go? I would like to go to space. I have no interest in going to space. What if I say, hey, Evan, I want to go to space and I want you to come with? Wow. <laughs> you want to go to space? Yeah, why not? It's, not? it's cool. I mean... You get to control. You get to control what? Like, you're in the space, you know, you move, you could, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that makes no sense. You get to control, you get to move, what? You just want to float? Yeah. Swim. <laughs> no, I don't want, I don't like swimming. Your purpose comes from your pain. The thing that you struggle the most with as a human being is what you want to help other people through for the rest of your life. Something terrible happened to you. You know, at some point in our lives, something terrible happened to me, happened to you. Nobody gets through this life <laughs> trauma free. Something terrible happened to you. And that terrible thing will define you in one of two ways. Either that was negative and, and that story haunts you and holds you back and, and lit, fills you with all these limited beliefs, or you recognize that that thing that happened to you is the ultimate gift in that your purpose now becomes to help other people not struggle the same way that you did. When you can transform that giant pain that you had, emotional pain, when you felt the most worthless as a human being into something powerful and positive because it's now not just about you anymore, it's about serving and helping others who are like you, that's when everything changes. My purpose is to help entrepreneurs believe in themselves more because the, the worst day of my life, the worst moments in my life were when I was in my first business and I quit on my business partner and I, I had no belief. I, I was down on myself. I felt worthless. I felt I was working every day and just nothing was working out. And what do I do? What do I do? And I, I quit on my business partner. 
I quit because it was just too much, too much work, too much stress, too much negative thoughts, too much just lack of self-worth, not enough belief. And I woke up the next day and I, and I still, I went back to work because I did not want to live with the regret. And I actually had a voice of Oprah in my head telling me, just find a different way to stand. You know, if it's not working out, it's okay. Don't quit, just find a different way to stand. And I eventually made it through. We, we built the company, sold it, I had other successes, but the thing that fills me up forever is helping other entrepreneurs who are trying to believe in themselves because that's back to who I was. And I still make the content for 19 year old Evan because there are millions of people out there right now who currently are 19 year old Evan. And so one of the most helpful things that you can do is try to figure out a couple of things. One, what was that most painful moment? Like, how do we turn this into practical? A lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of you watching this channel, you are positive, you are energetic, you are enthusiastic, you are pouring into other people. You're probably the most optimistic person, most dream-filled person in your circle. And that's amazing, and that's a gift, and you should keep doing that. And you still have lots of moments where you don't believe in yourself, where you don't have the courage that you need, you don't have the boldness that you need. and and we don't like looking backwards. You don't like looking to the painful moments. The entrepreneurs, ambitious, positive people, it's like, I don't wanna think about all the negative things that happened to me, I wanna go off and build this thing. I don't wanna say stuck in negativity, is that you? Can you relate? <laughs> but it's important to think about that most painful moment, not to sit there and live there and say, oh, woe is me, but to recognize that there are millions of people right now who currently are still struggling with that thing. That thing that you have overcome, even if you're not done growing, learning, improving yet, that thing that you struggled with, that you're coming through, many, 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 millions of people right now, today, are struggling with that thing. And they need you, they need your hope, they need your voice, they need your message, they need your inspiration. You can reach those people in a way that Evan Carmichael can't, that Oprah Winfrey can't, that other people can't, because you experienced it and I and Oprah haven't. So step number one is to think about what is that most painful moment that you struggled through that you wouldn't wish on anybody else? Step number two then becomes, well, how did you get out of it? You know, again, you're not done climbing, but you're way better off than you used to be. It's funny how we, we criticize ourselves for not being further ahead. Like, oh, I, I, I should be up here. If I followed that idea, I'd be over here by now. All these other people are doing all these amazing things and I'm still feeling like I'm stuck. Okay. But also look at how far you've come, right? You know, you, you wanna keep climbing, growing, swimming, etc. but you've come a long way compared to who you used to be. And every now and then we need to pause, reflect, pat ourselves on the shoulder, say, you know what? I'm, I'm way further ahead than I used to be. Do you, from five years ago or 10 years ago, would look at the you today and say, holy cow, I can't believe you've done that, right? Evan from 10 years ago, who had, I don't know, a thousand subscribers on his YouTube channel, would look to Evan now and say, oh my gosh, that's crazy. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> Even though right now I'm thinking, I gotta do more, I gotta be better, I gotta work harder, I gotta, gotta go faster, I gotta come with new ideas, I'm not pushing enough, right? If you look back, man, there's been some tremendous growth. You've grown a lot. And so how did you how did you get out of the hole that you were in? How did you stop struggling as much? You probably tried a million different things, but there's one or two or three things that worked. That's teachable. That's teachable to other people. The thing that saved me was modeling success. I looked at Bill Gates' story and I modeled that for myself and my software company then started to have success. So what have I taught for the past 20 plus years now is how can other people model success? So how did you get out of the hole that you were in? And then how can you then teach that to other people? Because they're struggling. Because all of the tests and, and tries and attempts and failures that you went through to find the one, two, three things that work, you can now shortcut somebody else's path. This is what I think it means to max out hum your humanity. This is what I, what I think it means to live in what Jonathan Fields calls maximum sustainable generosity. It's like, how can you keep giving in a sustainable way that fills you up because you don't want to just do things for you. Humans are built to serve. It's wired inside you. You want to feel like you matter, like today matters, like the work you're going to do today is going to be meaningful to somebody. And the people you love helping the most are the ones who are currently struggling with the thing that you struggled with. 
So figure out what that thing is, that most painful moment in your life that you never want to go back to. And then how did you get out of the hole? Now that is teachable. And then step number three is having the courage to share your story. I get it. It's scary. It's difficult. It's hard to put yourself out there to share what you went through, the struggles. You may be afraid of how you're going to be judged or seen. You know, today you were just a normal person and now tomorrow you're going to put this out there. Now, you, now maybe you're, you're scarred or you're tarnished. But it's important because by you staying silent, it perpetuates the silence. By you being afraid to share your story, everybody else who's struggling with the same thing that you're struggling with, they feel afraid too. They feel like they don't belong. They feel like they're weird and not accepted and not normal. By you putting out your story and what you went through and are still going through, it gives the permission to other people to feel like they have somewhere that they belong, that they are normal, that they're gonna be okay too that they're not alone. So you sharing your story, I used to really struggle with thinking, well, only egotistical maniacs share their story and talk about themselves, right? It's about serving. Well, hold on. By you sharing your story it is actually serving. You're not sharing your story just to have the spotlight on you, just to say how amazing you are. You're sharing your story because you're hoping that other people can see themselves in you because your purpose comes from your pain. You're trying to reach the people who currently are who you used to be. And in looking at you and hearing you and what you've come through and where you are now, that will serve as inspiration for them to keep going or for them to even get started or for them to not take their life today because they saw your video or they read your book or they saw the post you put on social media. Sharing your story is not about you. Sharing your story is about impacting others. And they can see themselves in you where they can't see themselves in Evan Carmichael or Oprah Winfrey or insert, you know, whatever expert guru or entrepreneur. You have to figure out what that most painful moment in your life was. You have to understand how you got out of the hole because it's teachable. And then you have to share your story and put the message out there because your story will change somebody's life. Ultimately, your purpose comes from your pain. You wanna serve, you wanna help, you wanna feel like today matters, you wanna feel like when you show up to do the thing that you're gonna to do today, it's gonna to have an impact, maybe not on millions of people's lives, but on at least one person's life. If you felt like today you were gonna to touch in a deeply meaningful, profound way, at least one person's life, you're gonna show up totally differently then if you felt like today doesn't matter, that nobody cares, then just forget about the day. I love you. I want to see you win. Let's make it happen. When you figure out what you stand for, everything becomes so much easier. I meet a lot of entrepreneurs who they're doing this and they're doing that and they're doing this and they're doing also this thing. And it it's, feels like it's all over the place, right? Have, have you ever felt that? You're doing so many things and it feels like it's all over the place and you don't know how to bring it together. It doesn't feel like it fits together. Nobody understands what you're doing either. The way to bring it together is to figure out your most important core value. If you actually did the exercise, and, and I've talked about this in, in both my books, Built to Serve, Your One Word. If you actually did the exercise, you think about what do I stand for? If you have to pick something right now, your single most important core value, what would you pick? Mine is belief. What's yours? And there's all sorts of exercises we can get into on how to actually do it if you're struggling with that. But just pick, pick something. It's not going to be so far off. Whatever comes to mind right now, pick that. Now look at everything that you're creating, that you're selling, that you're offering, that's in your mind. And they all now kind of make sense. Everything that I do is belief, whether it's making videos like this, whether it's uh, making my NFT projects, whether it's going on my Discord, whether it's my other social media content strategies, whether it's speaking, whether it's books, whether it's my entrepreneur heroes trading cards that we turned entrepreneurs into into heroes and made them made them their own baseball cards and use that to raise six figures for Kiva to help entrepreneurs in Africa build their businesses, right? Whatever I'm doing, it feels like it, it could be all over the place, but it's not because it's still belief. Because at the end of the day, what I want to do is spread belief. Jeff Bezos wants to spread 
customer obsession. He wants to he wants to make a better experience for customers. And so he's in all sorts of different fields. Why? It feels like it's all over the place. It's not because Amazon is not just a book business. Amazon is in the customer experience business. Right? That's his most important core value. What's your most important core value? It'll help make everything make more sense. It'll help make your life make more sense, your business make more sense, and it'll help your customers understand better what you're doing. I remember watching a clip of Jay-Z being interviewed and they were asking him, how do you move from making music to being an entrepreneur, to having all these businesses? How, how does that make sense? And he said, it's just an extension of being creative. See, for him, it's not just about the music. It's about expressing creativity. And every field can add more creativity. Entrepreneurship can be more creative. Investing can be more creative. Product lines can be more creative. He sees himself not as a musician, but as a force of creativity. His most important core value is creativity. So it just makes sense to him to be able to jump from one field to another, to another, to another, where most people are stuck in the craft, right? You don't just do one thing. You don't want to do one thing. That's why you're an entrepreneur. You don't want to just do one little narrow thing for the rest of your life. But it feels like you're all over the place. And you are until you can wrap it under your most important core value. And what that does is gives you permission to explore and to try and to taste and to go into new fields. But also the ability to do something much bigger because whatever your most important core value is, that's what you want to spread to the world. I want to spread more belief to the world. Jay-Z wants to spread more creativity to the world. And he could have done what most people do. Most rappers, most musicians stick to just doing that thing. Okay, well, that's what I love and that's what I know. And so I'm just going to stick to doing that. How you become mogul status, right? How you start to change the rules of the game, how you start to have a much wider impact and bigger reach is to recognize that I don't just do one thing. I don't just have one skill. I've got a message. I've got a core value I want to put out to the world. And there's multiple ways for me able to do that. So Jay-Z sees himself through the lens of creativity. And then it makes sense. And it gives himself the permission to go off and chase those other ambitions. So for you, think about what is that most important core value and some easy hacks. Again, both my books go through this in a lot more detail, but think about who your favorite teacher was growing up. Think about who, what you loved about your parents. Think about your favorite movies, your favorite songs. Uh, think about anything that made you come alive, any experience. Why did you love that teacher? For me, it was my, my OAC, my grade 12 uh, French teacher. Why? It's not because she taught me French. Your favorite teacher wasn't because they taught you a subject matter. It's because they made you a better human. Madame Farr at my school, she helped me believe in myself more. When I doubted myself, when I wasn't getting the grades that I wanted to get, she helped turn me from a B and C student to a straight A plus student in my last year because she believed in me and she taught me how to believe in myself. That's why I love her. Not because she taught me French, right? Who was your favorite teacher? Why? Why? They made you a better human somehow. What was it about them? And when you can connect the dots and all the things that make you come alive from your favorite teacher and favorite books and favorite music, favorite lyrics, favorite, favorite TV shows, favorite movies, favorite friends, right? Favorite heroes. You can connect the dots. You like them, but instead of it, it being a happenstance, like you hope that good things happen to you, you can now design it. You can engineer it. I want to bring more belief into my life. And now that that's on my consciousness, now that I'm aware of it, I can make that happen as opposed to just hoping something positive happens to me. When you figure out your one word, your most important core value, you can engineer your life to bring more of that into you. And then the more you have, you can give more, you can serve more, you can help more, you can uplift up others more. You can motivate and inspire and give courage and hope to the world more because you have more to give, right? If, you, if you're running on empty, you don't have much to give to anybody. So it starts with that awareness.
of what is your single most important core value. And then bring that to your life and your business. I believe Bezos is about customer experience. Jay-Z is about creativity. What are you? What are you? What do you value the most? And then with that lens, look at your life, look at your business and see where are you following through and crushing it? And where are you not living up to it? Where are you doing the wrong things? What area of your life needs a little bit more of that? Because when you can look at your life through that lens, that's your best self looking back at you. That's the life you want to be living. Your highest self looking back at you and saying, hey, right here, the reason why you're not happy is because you're not living your most important core value. Figure that out and you have a roadmap. You have a guide. You have a compass for the rest of your life. Self-confidence comes from doing difficult things. Self-confidence, self-love, self-respect. It all comes from deciding to do something difficult. Here's what happens when, when something hard comes up and you find a reason why you can't do it. It's too hard. It's too difficult. It's too scary. Most people will let you off the hook. The people around you will say, yeah, yeah, that's way too hard. I mean, the fact you even thought about it was crazy. You let yourself off the hook. But then you realize, ah, I, I could have done it. You know, like that's the worst feeling in the world that you could have done something. But then you came up with an excuse as to why you can't. And that will eat you up. And even if the world lets you off the hook, recognize that they have lower standards than you. Recognize that the people who are giving you that advice and patting you on the back and saying it's okay, you, you don't need to do it. They don't like their life either. They're stuck. They're trapped. They're not pushing hard. They're not being aggressive for their goals. They're not tough either. And we're reinforcing that comfort loop. Every day, comfort you versus growth you are in a fight. <laughs> There's a war going on inside you. Comfort you versus growth you. Comfort Evan versus growth Evan. Every day there's a fight, there's a battle, there's a war going on. And you need to decide who's going to win the fight. It's a daily thing. And the more growth you wins against comfort you, the more you start to grow, the more you start to hit your goals, the more you start to have an impact, the more you start to love yourself. Because again, even if the world will let you off the hook, you know it's just an excuse. I think most people think of it as a giant step that you have to take to build that self-confidence. It's not. I think it's much more about the daily battles with yourself that then builds up to major things. Just like you don't go to the gym and, and lift 400 pounds, you start by lifting 5 pounds or 10 pounds or 20 pounds or 40 pounds, whatever it is. Just, that's how you start to build the muscle. It's much more about the daily building of the muscle to show yourself who you are much more than the one-off heroic moments. Here's an example. So uh, yesterday we had an insane snowstorm here in Toronto. I don't know if we can, uh, it's kind of blurry, you can't see. We had, I can see some here behind me. It's like, look, you can see that mountain of snow behind me. We had an insane snowstorm. We had probably the worst snowstorm in Toronto, Canada in a decade. I have not seen this much snow in a crazy amount of time. And so I'm going for a walk, uh, rucking and rucking is where you carry a backpack. So I'm carrying a backpack of 20 pounds as I'm walking, doing my normal walk. And it's it's crazy outside. Normally the rucking alone is hard enough and I just increased the weight in the backpack. Now I, there's no path to walk on. And this morning I was walking through an area and there was zero path. The snow is up to my knees and I need to get through. So what's, what are my options? Well, I could, I could complain and turn around, <laughs> right? Like, oh, I could look out the window and say, ah, oh, so much snow. I'm not going to do that. I, I, I'll do it when there's less snow, you know? And then the next day there's less snow. There's still snow and the next day there's still snow. And then all of a sudden you just give up on the habit, right? Like you let yourself off the hook to say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. And then, and then you never do it. And then the habit's gone. And that's what you're teaching yourself. This is why it leads to identity. This is why it leads to negative self-worth and negative self-confidence because the next time you come up with an idea, you've already reinforced the training. You're training yourself that when you come up with an idea, you don't do the thing. When you say you're going to do it and you're going to start tomorrow and then you don't, 
the next time you come up with an idea, guess what? You, you, you've already reinforced the pattern. Like, I don't follow through. I'm not going to do that. I'm excited today, but tomorrow I won't follow through. So there's a the snow. It's up to my knees, right? Up to my knees. And I'm 6'1". So it's it's some serious snow. Like, I got to walk through. Not quite that. That's that's probably taller than me. Uh, I don't have to walk through that much. But, but up to my knees. I'm looking at it. And I've got to go, I don't know, 100 meters through this thing. And initially, my thought was, oh, man, why is there no path? Why has nobody shoveled this? Why has nobody snow blowed this? Like, I gotta get over there. I got a backpack on. I'm rucking. I'm sweating like crazy. I'm already exhausted. Now I gotta go through this. This is when we need to catch ourselves, right? Everybody would have let me off the hook. And an another me would have let me off the hook, right? Comfort Evan would have let Growth Evan off the hook. So it's okay. Go back home or go the long way around where there's a path don't go through that snow up to your knees and as soon as i caught it now what most of the time you won't catch it most of the time you'll just do you'll do the automatic thing and usually the automatic thing is is the comfort thing so usually play small by default usually you you'll look outside and see the snow and not go just by default not even catching the the conversation with yourself but when you catch it this is a really important moment. What do you do? Do you do the difficult thing or do you do the comfort thing? Because when you catch it and you make a conscious choice, this is how we start to either change our identity or reinforce our identity. So I looked at it, I caught it and I said, I'm going through, let's go. You know, I caught the negative thinking, I caught the comfort Evan coming over, walk around, go home. Nope, not happening. We're going through. We are going through. We are going to make it through. <laughs> and it was rough. You know, I'm walking through. I'm freezing. Uh, I'm taking one kind of giant step at a time. Snow is getting all through my boots, all down my legs. I, I almost slip and fall. I have a coffee that I, that I picked up. Uh, it's dripping all over the place. And in my head as I'm going through it, it's like, this is the best. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, Evan. You got this, man. Let's go. You do difficult things. That's the thing on repeat in my head. Combined with that, I'm also telling myself that, you know what? Not only am I doing this difficult thing for me, I'm also creating a path for other people that the next person who comes up against this 100 meters or so, that now they will have not an easy time, but an easier time of crossing the same path so that they can get across. So it's going to service. If you're ever having a hard time getting yourself to do something, it's one, you do difficult things, remind yourself, and two, default to service, that it's not just about you, it's for other people. Now, that may not even be true. Maybe nobody ever comes across that path. Maybe I didn't make it easier for the next person. Maybe somebody comes five minutes after me and snow blows the whole thing. And so there was zero service. It doesn't matter. It's the story that I'm telling myself that it will serve other people that will get you to then do the difficult thing. So in order to make it happen, there's two triggers that I use. One is language. So scary, difficult or hard. If you say those things, if you feel those things, if you text those things, if you write those things, if you're talking to yourself and you catch those things, then you have to do it. You can no longer accept scary, difficult, or hard as reasons for you not to do the thing. Because your great life is on the other side of scary, difficult, hard. Everything you want, the business you want, the relationships you want, the health that you want, everything, everything, your great life. If you wrote down a list of everything you want out of life, Everything on that list comes on the other side of you doing scary, difficult, and hard things. Growth you. That's growth you fighting comfort you. So when you catch yourself saying, speaking, writing, thinking, scary, difficult, or hard, that's a, that's a trigger. It should be a trigger. It's a trigger for me. It should be a trigger for you to go and do it. Do it. Go. Walk through the giant snow. And you might be thinking, well, how does that help me with my business? It's just walking through snow and I'm going to be cold and have snow in my boots. How does that help me? It's an identity thing. Because as soon as you start to teach yourself that you're the kind of person who follows through on those scary, difficult, hard things, then the next time that shows up anywhere in your life, in your business, in your relationships, in your health, 
anything that actually helps you accomplish your goals, you're going to be ready to show up for it. You're going to be more likely to actually do the thing because you've been training and conditioning yourself to do the thing. That's why walking through 100 meters of snow matters. So the first is scary, difficult, hard. Those are verbal cues or, or thought cues. The second is the boom, boom, boom test where your heart is beating quickly. It's like when your heart is going crazy like that, it's usually because you should be doing something. You're afraid, right? Now, don't again, go, don't go, don't go standing on the highway uh, because it's scary and it makes your heart race, right? Don't be stupid. But most of the things that you're afraid of aren't actually things that are going to be life threatening, right? They're not. They're usually it's other people's opinions. Usually you're afraid of not failing, but somebody watching you fail, right? You're going to fail at something who's going to see you. That's what we're actually afraid of. And that cannot be a good enough reason. It can't. Not anymore. If you're afraid of losing in front of somebody, if you're afraid of other people's opinions, if you are living your life based off of the expectations and judgment of other people, you will never do anything great. You will never live your great life because somebody always has a plan for what you should be doing with your life. You will never please everybody. It's not possible. You have to start to learn to please yourself. And it's not doing something just to show off and just to prove somebody wrong. I'm not a big fan of, of tapping into that energy. The reason to do something is not to prove somebody wrong and make somebody else look stupid. The reason to do something is because that's who you are and that's what you want to do. And so learning to do difficult things, teaching yourself step by step, brick by brick, one snow uh, storm at a time, <laughs> teaching yourself that will change your life. You deserve a better life. You deserve a great life. And that comes on the other side of you doing the things that are scary, difficult, and hard. The key to enjoying your life is being present. The key to focusing is being present. The key to feeling like you're valuable and what you do matters is being present. Being present is at the core to a lot of great things, but a lot of people really struggle to stay present because what are you doing? most people spend most of their time either thinking about the past or thinking about the future and not even in a positive way you spend time thinking about the past living in regret of all the things that you could have done you could have said you should have done you should have said i wish i did that i wish that video i made didn't suck you know i wish i wish i wish i wish why didn't i and we beat ourselves up does that sound familiar is that you maybe even a little little bit or we spend our time being anxious about the future. I think as entrepreneurs, we get excited about the future, of where we could go and what we could build, and that's that's the fun daydreaming part. But a lot of thinking about the future is stress-inducing. It's anxiety. It's it's worrying about what could go wrong. All the millions of things that could go wrong, that may never go wrong, but we're still worried about them, right? Again, does that sound somewhat familiar? When you are stuck living in the past or living in the future, you're never obviously present, but you're not happy, you're not productive, you're not focused, you're not creating, you're not serving, none of it, and you're not fulfilled. I look at people who want to get started on YouTube, for example, or entrepreneurs who are trying to launch their business, and people made maybe one video or two videos, and because it didn't work out or you made a video and you felt embarrassed by yourself or you launched a product and somebody had one bad piece of feedback you are reliving that same negativity over and over and over and over and over again people ask me well what happens when you have a bad video what happens when your video bombs i was speaking at brendan burchard's influencer summit yesterday and somebody asked me well what do you do when a video doesn't take off or do well like, well, lots of my videos don't take off and do well. <laughs> I think I don't know which ones are going to blow up. The ones that have blown up surprise me. Like, that's the one that blew up. I love this one so much more. How do I keep going? Because I'm looking to the next one. Like, I'm, I'm worried. I'm working on videos now. I don't know what I released yesterday or the day before or the day before. Because I'm making new content. Think about how you got over a relationship. Well, you, you, when you get into a new relationship, it's easy to forget about your last relationship. It's thinking about what you're doing now. And if you have nothing right now, what do you do? If there's nothing to do right now, you spend your time in regret about the past or worried about the future. It's not enough action happening right now. 
I don't care about videos that failed in the past because I'm going to be making tons more. Another one comes out today and another one tomorrow, another one tomorrow. And it's, it's a moment to reflect and say, hey, okay, I could have done better on that one. Or why didn't this one do well? Okay, this moment here, that sucked. Perfect. I'm making one today. I'll make it better. At least that's the intent. Maybe I don't achieve it, but that's the intent. And if you show up with that intent every day, you will eventually make it better. Most people get too caught up on, on the mistakes that they made in the past. It's in the past. You did the best you could with what you've got. Remind yourself of that. You did the best you could with what you had. Great. Don't be so hard on yourself. Keep making. Because the worst thing you can do is quit now. The worst thing you can do is stop now. Because when you look back on your life, when you're 120, that you'll regret that you, you stopped. You regret that you had a chance, you had a moment. You could have done something and you didn't. Like That's the biggest regret of all not taking any kind of action, not the mistakes that you made. You, We don't regret really the things that we did. Most of the things that people regret are the things they did not do. Most people's biggest regrets are not taking enough action. Letting that little man voice inside their head tell them all the reasons why they weren't gonna win. Convincing themselves that they weren't capable. And as a result, they stopped when they wished they had the courage, the strength, the tenacity to keep going. Right? That could be you. You could, you could, you could get going, you keep keep going, you could stay present, you could make the next thing. And at the same time, a lot of people are then also worried about the future. Well, what if I make this and it doesn't work out? I, I was talking to people again yesterday about their YouTube channels and the same person asked me, well, what if it doesn't work out? Like, what if I make videos and nobody sees them? So what if nobody sees my videos? And then the next question was, well, what if people see my videos and they don't like me. So this person at the same time is afraid of people not seeing their videos and people seeing their videos. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, right? This is, this is the loop that we get stuck in. You're afraid of people not seeing you and you're afraid of people seeing you. you like you can't win. The mental dialogue we have with ourselves, we can't win. It's not possible. We need to start to flip that. We need to, we need to rewire ourselves. And that starts again with being present. Like you can't control what the outcome is going to be in the future, but you can control what you're doing right now. If you can switch so that you are mostly present, not really thinking about the past, unless it's gratitude, right? If you can flip the regret of the past to gratitude, right? And if you can switch the anxiety for the future to excitement or vision, that's when you really start to win. Somebody came to um, an event that I did in Toronto and asked me, these guys drove up from Boston to do a podcast with me and then stuck around for my event. And they asked me, how much of your time do you spend percentage wise living in the past, present, future? And I said, 0% past, 85% present, 15% future. And the 15% is, is vision, what I want to create. You know, as entrepreneurs, we have to be a little bit forward thinking, but it's, it's 85% present. I don't even know what day it is. Like it's present, not even present to today, but present to this moment. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it is. I don't know what I'm doing after this. All I know is I'm here right now with you guys. And that allows for focus. That allows for happiness. That allows for purpose. That allows for life to give you so many gifts when you're not stuck living in the past or the future. So how do you do it? How do you, how do you get there? I think the best thing you can do is every time you catch yourself drifting, daydreaming forward or back in a negative way, you catch it every time you can catch it. You won't catch it most of the time. So don't put this impossibly high burden on yourself that every time I'm I'm thinking about the past and I'm living in regret, I'm going to catch it and do something about it. You won't catch it. You won't catch it. This is this is decades of un, unwiring our brain, right? It's fine. Don't don't have when you're starting something new, don't have crazy expectations that you have to get it perfect or you're a failure. Right? This is the problem, not just with this one exercise, but with everything. Don't expect to be great out of the gate. 
You won't. You're just starting. You're at the beginning. Why do you think you're going to be fantastic? And because the first time it doesn't work out perfectly, then we quit. That is not how it works. Right? You, you need to expect to suck at the beginning. That's okay. That's how you learn something. Every time you can catch yourself drifting, you're, you're living in the past in, in regret or future being stressed out. Just try to bring it back to right now. Just bring it back to the present and focus on anything. Focus on a physical object. You can, you could, I could focus on my coffee. Like how do I, how can you get present right now? You can focus on the coffee. Wow, look at this coffee cup. You know, it's tall, it's red. I'm, I'm grateful for the beverage inside here. Uh, I like that they have the sleeve. Ooh, it's got a maple leaf on it, right? Like this is all I'm being present right now with the cup of coffee. It, it is warm. I can feel the sensation on my hands. I can taste it in my mouth, right? Where most of the time, even when you're eating something, most of the time when you're eating something, you're usually focused on something else, right? You're eating while you're on your phone. You're eating while you're watching a video. You're eating while you're doing something else and not ever actually enjoying the food because we're thinking about what's next. So every time you can catch it, you just try to bring it back to the moment, to right now. And then what's gonna happen is the more you do that, the more you'll catch it. So right now, maybe you catch it 1% of the time, but the more you do that and practice that and just pick one thing to focus on that's in your environment or focus on your breath, right? It's why meditation works so well with a mantra or breath work because it gives you something to focus on. When you're first starting out with being present and focused, it's helpful to have somewhere to put your attention because focus on nothing doesn't feel like very practical advice to the beginner trying to figure this out. So you focus on your breath. And anytime your mind wanders, bring it back to the breath. Every time you get stressed or anxious or worried or what you're gonna do next, bring it back to the breath. Every time you get bored, bring it back to the breath, right? The breath could be anything. The breath could be the cup of coffee. Look at the cup of coffee, feel the cup of coffee. Every time you get distracted, you're worrying about work or your life, back to the cup of coffee, back to your mantra, right? All of that can work. It's just picking something to, to ground you back in being in the present. And again, the more you catch it and the more you do it, the more you'll catch the next one. And the more you do it again the next time. It's a skill that you learn. You're, you're retraining your brain how to work. And what you'll find is the more you can do that and the more you practice it, bit by bit, day by day, you'll find yourself having less stress, being more productive, staying more focused, caring less about what other people think about you, and overall being happier. And what that does is free you up to actually go and do the work that's inside you, the genius that you've got to put out to the world and serve. Being present is the key to unlocking your happy life. Less time living in regret about the past, less time living in the stress of the future and anxiety for what may come and more time focused on what can you do right now, today, in this moment, to be proud of yourself and live your best life. Your energy changes how you show up. When you are happy, positive, optimistic, full of life, creative energy, you, you make amazing things. But when you feel negative, down, depressed, sad for yourself, low energy, you know you don't make amazing things. And it, this is not something new that I'm telling you, you know this. The challenge is we are not in a high energy state consistently enough to, to stay consistent on our goals, to follow through, to create the momentum. Because we allow outside forces, as well as our internal voice, to keep us small, to keep us protected, to keep us scared, to depress our courage muscle. And then even though you have great ideas and great ambitions and a great heart and a desire to serve, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen because the energy isn't connected to it. If you've got a big idea, but low energy, nothing happens. You don't follow through. And you end up seeing other people with a worse version of your idea but just more energy, go off and do it. Have you ever seen it happen? You ever seen somebody make tons of money, have a huge impact off of your idea, 
with somebody with less heart and less vision and less creativity, but they just they just did it. They just got started. They just took action and just stayed consistent in their energy and they made it happen. And you didn't because you allowed the energy to dip. And so if energy is so important, then how do we how do we manage our energy? How do we keep it high? And it doesn't mean that you always have to be on top of the world and you don't have to delude yourself and say, I'm amazing. This is going to be the greatest day of all time. Like you don't doing things that you don't believe won't help you get the energy that you need because you'll do those things say this is BS this isn't working you don't always have to be in peak energy but what you do need to do is be in the right energy to serve your mission and whatever you're doing today so let me use me as an example and today uh, is a great example because I did not sleep well last night had had two and a half hours sleep just tossing and turning and, and just could not could not get to sleep <laughs> So I slept from like 6.30 to nine o'clock, did not sleep until 6.30 in the morning. And that is thankfully a rare occurrence. You know, most nights I get eight hours sleep, seven and a half to eight and a half hours sleep. But on a day like today, when I woke up and did not have a ton of energy, I did not wake up and say, yes, I feel like crushing it, let's go. And I didn't want to do something that would feel fake and disingenuous because if you don't believe it, then it's not gonna happen anyway. So what did I do? Well, first off, videos have to happen today because that's part of my identity, right? So momentum has to happen. So if you start to train yourself and you create a calendar and say, okay, today is a blank. I'm filming this on a Tuesday. Today's a Tuesday. Tuesday's my video day. No matter what, I'm filming videos. I gotta film videos. It's gotta happen. It may not be my best video, but I'm gonna show up and give it my, the best that I've got. The best energy, this is, this is a lot lower energy than I would normally show up with a video, but it's a different vibe, it's a different kind of energy, and hopefully it still serves. And maybe, maybe you like and connect more with this energy than I've been yelling in the car, I don't know. But videos have to happen, first off. Second, get outside. You know, get outside, get fresh air, get some sun on my face. If you, you know, you wanna change your energy, you wanna shift where you're at and how you're thinking, because it's part physical energy, but also just mental energy. How do you feel about what you're doing and what's gonna happen today? And getting out of your home, changing your physical environment, getting some sun on your face can make a huge difference. So every morning I have my Believe Walk and I'm walking around the park, getting some green, getting some sun. Hopefully it's not raining. Today's a beautiful day. And already it starts to make you feel a little bit happier, a little bit more in the right energy space. Music is a great way to change your energy. And often what we do is we put on songs that make us feel how we currently are. So if you feel sad, you put on a sad song. If you feel low, you put on a low song. If you feel chill, you put on a chill song. Where what we want to do is, if you want to change your energy, put on the song that matches that energy. If you want to feel happier or upbeat, put on happier or upbeat songs. I have a playlist on my channel called hashtag believe, all caps on the, on the letters, believe. That's all of the songs that I listen to. And every day I've got that playlist going. I pick a random song and it just starts playing. And they're all songs that if they came on, it would make me move. And when you move, you start to change your energy. What I'm trying to do is, again, not create some fake energy, but something that I can actually connect with. I'm putting on songs that I actually like. I actually like having some sunshine on my face. You know, I actually like doing the work that I'm about to do. But it requires you showing up with a certain level of energy. And then the last one is, you know, who you're feeding your mind with, who are you around, who you're surrounded by, both the people in your life, you know, actual humans, and the videos that you watch, or books that you read, and podcasts you consume. I remember um, on the weekend, and you, you gotta guard against this, it's crazy. So on the weekend, I went to go meet an old family friend, and he just had, a lot of limiting beliefs about him and what he's creating and where he wants to go and uh, it wasn't it wasn't meant to be a coaching session and I'm not there to help him but just a really negative low energy on a weekend and I'm you know that's not usually part of my routine on the weekend and so I go to meet him and my whole day ended up being thrown off until I caught it at night to say why are why am I so low and negative today? 
in comparison to what I would normally be. And I thought back, like, oh, yeah, you know what? Ever since I went to see him, I was fine in the morning. I went to see him and it had this negative ripple effect. You know, like, you can have a positive ripple effect on people. You watch a video and it can have a positive ripple effect on you. But, but there's negative ripple effects too. And the people who you're surrounded by, who you're hanging out with, or you're watching on YouTube or podcasts, etc., they can have a negative ripple effect on you as well. And so he had this negative ripple effect on me that lasted almost the whole day until I caught it in the evening. I said, this isn't what I want. It's not even my voice. It's like his voice planted in me. Why am I feeling this way, thinking this way? I don't, I don't like it. And so it became a conscious choice and I applied a lot of the same things. I got it, I went outside. Went outside, reset, get some fresh air. It always helps me. Put on some music, songs that I actually like. Not some fake song that somebody else likes and says, dance to this, it'll make you feel good. Songs that I actually like. There are some songs that if it came on, it would make you move. It doesn't mean you get up and dance and go spastic and crazy, but there's some songs that if it came on, you would, you would bob your head or you would tap your feet or bounce your knee. There's some songs that would just make you do that, right? So put on one of those songs. It would naturally make you feel happier. Um, so I did that too. And then in terms of just guarding against people, I made a note that, hey, the next time I go see this person, he's a, he's a family friend. So the next time I go see him, uh, which isn't that often, but still, the next time I see him, I need to remind myself of this. You know, that, that I, need to, I need to have my shield ready. I need to give love as much as possible and I'm not gonna allow his negativity to, to break my shield. You know, to permeate through. And so the more that you can catch those things, the more you'll stay in a more energetic state. And all of this, again, is not trying to force fake energy in have you feel like you're doing something unnatural. I think it's actually the most natural thing of all time. I think getting sun is natural. I think smiling and being optimistic is natural. I think everything, I think the negativity inside your head was planted there, was put there by other people. That's what's unnatural when you were a kid and smiling and happy, had dreams for the future, everything was possible, everything was hopeful. Sure, you had bad days, but you were a happy kid. And all of those dreams and positivity get squashed out of us by other people who hate their lives. And so I think having energy is actually the most natural thing. Not every day has to be on top of the world, but having positive energy is natural. Having sunshine and leading to happiness is natural. Putting on music and, and dancing and moving is natural. Being around other positive, optimistic, happy people, when you're around them, you'll naturally be more positive, optimistic, and happy. And so it's about finding what is a natural flow for you. That when you do these things, it brings out a better energy in you. It brings out a happier, more positive, more optimistic you. And if you know what some of those things are, you can copy my list if you want some of them, right? Sunshine music, videos. Then put it into your daily routine. Put it into your daily calendar. Every day, this has to happen. Because if you did the thing, just imagine this. You've had days when you felt energetic and you've had days when you didn't and every, would, everybody would give you the, the out, right? Like a day like today, two and a half hours sleep. Everybody would give me the out. It's like, it's okay, you don't have to do it. There are days when you need to bring the energy. If you did that every day, just imagine for the next month, every day, you did the thing that puts you in a better energy state. Not that you're on top of the world and then a fake high every day, but a better energy state. You did the thing in the morning that puts you in a better energy state for the next 30 days. How much does your life change? How much does how you show up change? How much does the work that you do change? How much does your bank account change? How much does the impact you're creating change? How much of a better father or mother or husband or wife are you because you're showing up with more energy, more positive energy? Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you're different. 
you are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end and I love you. So as a special celebration, if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. If you want to watch another top 10 rules of Evan Carmichael, check out the video next to me. Continue to believe. I will see you there. Humans are built to serve. You want to help people. It's hardwired into us. Serving other people touches the same part of our brain as eating food and having sex. You need it.